podcast. Not too sloppy behind me. Yeah. I'm not recording the video. Oh really? Okay. No, we're not. We're not doing it. I need to figure out how to do that. Though. I'd ask uh, Sean Heron. I know. I always ask. Him, so I'm tired of asking. <laughs> How long you been doing this, dumbass? He might be one of the nicest dudes ever. Yeah, he is. I mean, he would help me in a heartbeat. I just feel bad. I get it. But I'm always going to him when I got here. All right, you ready to do this? Yeah, I'm fired up. Where you go, my friend? Pills, yeah. All right, all right, all right, lead heads. We are back with another episode of the Talking Lead Podcast where we have been leducating the uneducated since 2012. Going on 10 years coming up. So that should be a big blowout. I'd you, say. You would think that I would do some sort of big celebration or giveaway or something for <laughs> for 10 years? I think you should. I think you owe it to yourself. I do. I think I do. But, you know, it's so much work. We just did a, we just did a big giveaway um, celebrating our joining Full 30 Network. We had like twenty thousand yep. dollars in prizes, and uh, it was it was pretty awesome giveaway. So, but it, you're right; it's a lot to organize and and uh, make happen in, in a time efficient manner. It, it is. I, I I don't know. Are you worth it, Leadheads? Let me know. Let me know if you want me to do some sort of big tenth anniversary celebration uh, giveaway, and. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. I don't know. I don't know if these lead heads are worth it or not. <laughs> <laughs> so the voice you hear in the background, uh, some of you longtime lead heads may, may recognize it. Or you may like, that sounds familiar, but I haven't heard it in a while. It's our good buddy Chris Wood, who is now with Leviathan Group, the Leviathan Group, but was formerly with Tactical Walls. So yes, sir. Chris, yeah. welcome in. Thanks, buddy. Really, really pumped to be back. Yeah, so we've been talking uh, a lot lately, and mm-hmm. the the company that you're with, you've been with them how how many years now? Uh, a little over two. So yeah, still kind of new to yep. to the Leviathan Group, and that's kind of what we're going to talk about today because you guys do some some pretty cool stuff. Yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, you know, stuff that I'm interested in movies and in TV and entertainment. Yep. Uh, with with firearms, so we're going to talk about all the cool things that Leviathan Group is doing, and we're going to get caught up with Chris Wood, not Woods, <laughs> <laughs> just the one. Uh, find out what he's been doing in the woods, for sure. Uh, but first, we got to thank all those that make this podcast possible, because we don't go to you leadheads. I don't think any of you have sent me one one red cent, one red penny. So we got to rely on our sponsors. And our good buddies over at Caltech have been with this podcast for probably just as long as we've been doing it. So Chad and the group over there at Caltech, go show them some love on Instagram, on Facebook. Uh, and then, of course, the best way to do that is go to your local gun dealer and buy their products. So I know, you know, they're, they're like they're like unicorns to find, you know, find a sub 2000 or an RDB or, uh, you know, the KSG and. They've got that new 5.7 pistol out. That thing's cool. Yeah, the the P50, uh, because yep. it holds 50 rounds. <laughs> I've got the, uh, I've had the PMR30 forever. I love that thing. That The PMR30 is awesome. The CMR uh, yep. that they've got is a really cool gun, too. Uh, but they're always innovative over there, which is what I love about Keltec. George Kelgren, the owner over there, uh According to Chad, he's still got a, you know he's got a playbook full of stuff that he's not even uh, you know got got to the CNC machine yet. So there's no telling yeah. what we'll get in the years to come from Caltech. I can't wait to see. That's for sure. Absolutely. So go show them some love over at Caltech, uh, and then our good buddies over at Seal One. When you're cranking some lead through those Caltechs or your Nemo arms or your ODS 1775 from Occam Defense Solutions, Uh, whatever gun that you're shooting, you're going to want to clean that from time to time. And our good buddies over at SEAL-1 have the product that you need. Their CLP 
gun cleaning uh, solutions. They've got their product in several different delivery methods. So if you're a patch person, they've got some pre-soaked patches. They've got the uh, liquid that you can use. They've got the the paste. They've even got it in an aerosol. If you're a you know an aerosol, which I am, I love aerosol uh, cleaning yep. products. So uh, you can get those, and they're good for your guns. You're you're out on the boat. You're out on the water. Uh, it's good for cleaning, and it protects against corrosion. So if you're out in in the wet, moist areas, uh, it's going to protect pretty much anything, not just guns. So. Uh, I've been putting it on several different things. I've been putting it on my knives. Yep. I've been cleaning my knives and sharpening my knives with it. I put it on my car, uh, kind of like a wax. Instead of using like regular car wa- wax or polish, I've been putting it on my car. And it really beads up uh, the water. I bet. Yeah. Yeah, that's like rain X on steroids. Yeah, exactly. And, of course, you know, the old lead sled, she's got some some paint chips here and there. She. <laughs> She's a 98 Yukon. I was going to uh, say, the lead sled's been in the gun industry longer than I have, I think. <laughs> she's been around a minute. Yeah, definitely. She's new, she's due for a new wrap, though. So yep. that's something I need to get going is uh, get a new wrap thrown on her. Uh, that'll definitely help with all those little rust spots that I got. <laughs> but Seal One, go to SealOne.net and use the code LEADHEAD, and you're going to get a big fat 25% off at Seal One. Nice. And uh, we're probably going to have Dwight on uh, an upcoming episode of the AK Corner because they're they're uh, one of the big sponsors for that too. And we give away one of their uh, their gun kit, clean kits, each episode of that. So we're going to have him come on and uh, probably give away the next one of those kits to one of you leadheads. Very nice. AK Corner coming up the 15th of every month. Don't miss it. So, Chris. Yes, sir. We've got a lot to get caught up on. <laughs> yep. We've got a lot to talk about. Uh, but before we do that, uh, we need to take care of some jack wagons and honor some heroes. Mm-hmm. So, Gunny, bring that train in. Hey, Ralph, Semper Fi, do or die, hold them high at 8th and I. It is time for the Talking Lead Jack Wagon of the Week. So, brace yourself, baby. All right, so the train has stationed. And I took a week off, so there's been a lot happened between our last episode, which you, if you didn't get a chance, make sure you go back to 389, where we had one of the Richards on, Mike Sodini. He's a member of the Richard crew. Uh, but we talked about mental health, guns, and laws. And I think our jack wagons are probably going to play into some of this, too, where we specifically were talking about in last episode um, that HR Bill 127 yep. that's been proposed uh, and how uh, discriminating it is uh, against, you know, sp- specifically people who have mental health issues, uh, have been diagnosed in the past maybe with a mental health issue and are fine now, you know, yep. how this is going to affect them and um, all the, the fees and the taxes you know, that they're proposing that go along with this, uh, you know, additional screenings and background checks that go with, go behind purchasing a a gun now. Uh, It's just ridiculous, you know, and it's going to, it's going to price a lot of people out of it. It's going to end up costing more than the gun, which a lot of people struggle with, you know, now is being able to afford a firearm for their, for their own personal protection. And then adding all these on top of it. Uh, it's ridiculous. And then we actually had uh, a guy from the mental health side of things on it. He owns a, um, uh, what are those people called that you go to when you got mind problems? Uh, oh, uh, like a therapist. A therapist, yeah. <laughs> a therapist. Um, and, you know, we got his side of things too and how this is going to uh, really affect them negatively as well because they don't have – uh, the staff, I guess you would say, there's not enough mental health professionals to deal with the amount of people that you know each year apply for their firearms license and have to would have to do these mental health screenings and things like yep. that. So the wait for people to do that, you know, it's going to increase your wait time as well to be able to get a firearm. For sure. You know, so we're still, you know, we're still that 127 is still on our jack wagon train. Uh, any of these, you know, these new gun laws that they're trying to impose, 
you know, the mass shooting that, that occurred between our last episode and now, the, the mass murder. You know, there was another one in Boulder, Colorado, which it seems like the, everything happens in Colorado. You know, all these, these mass murders are happening in Colorado. It's something in the air and the water, I don't know what it is. They're certainly higher than the national average, aren't they? I would think so, yeah. I definitely would think so. But, you know, it's just... It, <clears throat> During Trump's presidency, <laughs> did we hear about mass shootings that often? I mean, were there, there was probably a couple. I don't know if there was. Uh, there was that guy in, I can't remember now, with, I think it was Virginia Beach. There was that guy who went into the, uh, like a federal building or maybe a municipal building, and he had the suppressor. And that's when Trump came out saying that he didn't like suppressors. Yeah. So, but it's just it's just how ironic it is that once this new administration takes office, you know, they're they're getting their crap, you know, kinda in their first how many days has this been? You know, their yeah. first first two months of office. And now we're starting to see things fall in line for them to start pushing and promoting their gun uh grabbing agendas now. It's just just very yeah. ironic, I think. Yeah, it was uh it's kinda clockwork, wasn't it? Yeah, it seems to be. And this guy, I mean, they're not really releasing a whole lot of information on him. I mean, by his name alone, he doesn't seem like he's an American to me. Um, what I've read so far, and, you know, take it with a grain of salt, because who knows what's true when you read stuff online at this point. Right. But uh, my understanding is that he's a Syrian immigrant. And I don't know if it was a refugee situation or if he immigrated prior to that, but... My basic understanding is that he was originally at least Syrian national. Let's see what this says. So this happened with the 22nd, March 22nd uh, is when this shooting occurred. If you haven't heard about it, um, if you've been on vacation, you've been on spring break, uh, I understand. All right. So just real, I'm going to recap at high level, 10 people. And one of those included a Boulder police officer were killed in a mass shooting, mass murder, at a supermarket in Boulder, Colorado on the 22nd. The suspect, uh, they got him in custody. I think they shot him in the leg or something, which is, an, is another strange thing because most of these people end up dead, these, um, these mass murderers. Either they yeah. off themselves or they do um, suicide by cop. Yep. Uh, so, ten people. This was at a, like a supermarket. They're saying that he used an AR pistol. Yep. An AR-15 pistol. So shooting the five-five-six rounds. It was it was braced, is what they're saying. Uh, but I've not I've yet to see any pictures of the actual firearm used. Yeah. All of all it is is hearsay and and talk. So I haven't seen anything to prove to me that that's what he actually used, which I'm not saying he didn't. Very well may have. Some of the shooting was live streamed. Oh, my gosh. I'm sure all that's been taken down now. Oh, yeah. yeah there was one guy who, instead of calling 911, just started live streaming. I remember that. Oh, my gosh. What a douche. Yeah. Yeah. His, uh, his response to danger is very different than mine. Court. So Boulder Police Chief. Maris Harold confirmed Friday the suspect used a Ruger AR-556 pistol. Okay. He confirmed it, but... Yeah. <laughs> have actual gun experts confirmed it. <laughs> right. You know right. what I mean? Yep. Um, the dude's name is Ahmad al al we Alisa. I don't know. He's one, two, three, four A's. Yeah. Yeah. Call him the quad, the quad A. <laughs> uh, and this was, as I'm reading this, this was about three hours ago. He's just set to appear in Boulder District Court before a judge. Um, it will be the suspect's second appearance in what is expected to be a lengthy court process. His defense attorney said at his first hearing last week that they need time to uh, assess his mental health. So, um, we think he's Syrian, 
But they said he, he obtained the gun legally. Yep. Did a background check and all that. I thought if you weren't an American citizen, you couldn't do that. You've got to be in the country so long. you got to have some sort of citizenship, right? That was my understanding, but it looks like he's gone. He went to high school here, so who knows? He must have come here. Maybe he's here. half. Could be. I heard that he was on a watch list, a terrorist watch list. Again, that sounds familiar on some of these these mass shootings. I mean, if you're on a watch list... Well, unless he purchased it prior to being put on that list. I think he he purchased it days before. Oh, is that right? Yeah, from what I understand, he he purchased it just some days before, maybe a week before or something like that, a couple of weeks before. But even that list is potentially pretty troubling because you or I could get put on that list for any number of reasons and then not be allowed to, you know, exercise our second amendment. Right. Well, you know, and that, that's the thing. Yeah. Just like fly list, no fly list. So you're automatically being stripped of constitutional rights without any due process at that point. Yeah. So apparently the fact that he was on the FBI's list or whoever's list didn't matter. Yep. Yep. So we can be on their list and we can still buy again, supposedly. For now. <clears throat> For now, yeah. But anyway, I mean, there's still a lot of, of things that they're not, or I haven't been able to find questions that I have uh, that just that just seem pretty obvious. But the the way the media is reporting it, it's just so matter of fact. Is like he was, you know, he was legally able to obtain a firearm. And he went and he killed 10 people. I mean, that's basically all I'm getting right now. Yep. Those are the uh, the exciting talking points, depending on your narrative. I don't know enough about this to really uh, go on about it, but uh, this, is, this is one of the things that is spurring uh, the controversy, all the new gun laws that, uh, that we're going to be hit with coming up very shortly. Maybe some executive orders. Do you think he'll go that far as to impose some executive orders? I mean, it's certainly been the trend for the last several presidencies, all the way back to Bush W. Is at least the time in my life that I've been aware of when those really started to become a whole different level. And, uh, you know, of course, no president since then has done anything to limit that power. And I certainly don't expect this administration to. Yeah. Uh, but they're saying no motive right now. There's been no motive. Yep. So given his religious background, his name, he's from Syria, they're just, why are the, not even speculating that it's terrorism, that, that he's right. a terrorist, that, you know, that he's a radicalized, and if he's an American, I mean, then just say that. He's a radicalized American. Yep. Uh, yeah. so as the world moves on, some of those who were witness to the terror are finding the path forward difficult. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to look at the parking lot every day. Blah blah blah. Give me the motive. He wasn't able to celebrate. 20. I just the the way they paint the victims, you know. And and yes, they should talk about the victims. I, I have no problem with that. And uh, we were talking earlier. Also, I was driving around town and I saw the the flags at half mast last week. Yep. I was like, why are the flags at half half staff, half mast? Uh, I guess it's half staff if you're on ground, and it's half mast if you're on a boat. Yeah, yeah. That that would be the uh, the difference. Uh, but it's apparently Biden ordered all the flags fly at half mast in honor of the the ten victims. Mm-hmm. Which you know, I kind of get that, but doesn't that take away from the true meaning of why you fly fly a flag at half staff? You know, I thought it was reserved for like national heroes and, you know, to honor people like that. Now, it's sad and tragic that these people died and were murdered, but they're not heroes. You know, they're not. They're just they're not heroes. They're victims. They're murder victims. And it's sad. And, you know, there's things that could be done. Um, Maybe I should do more research on uh, why flags are flown at half staff. And you leadheads probably know what, why that is. So why don't you shoot me an email, talking about gmail.com, uh, and educate me on that. Because I would love to be educated on the true reason why and when it's appropriate to fly a flag at half-staff 
and not just for political reasons because yeah. that's why he's doing it. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only reason Biden ordered it. That uh, he's you know he's he's got the the gun agenda that he's coming after your guns and you know he's just playing on everybody's heartstrings. You know. Yep. So that would be a, a good a good topic maybe one day. That might even make a good show as why we flag fly, fly the flags at half staff. It would definitely be interesting to get to to hear from somebody who's uh, well versed in that because I feel like it's something all of us sort of have like this very loose idea of without you know a ton of um, like hard fact behind it. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's just it's one of those things where we just take people's words for things nowadays instead of doing <laughs> any fact checking. You know, and that's that's one of the things that is bothering me. And you know, as I tell our listeners, you know, you got to critically think for yourself. Just don't take somebody's word for it. Yep. Uh, and I'm sure if I Googled why American flags, why are flags half staff? Why are flags half staff today? Why are flags put at half mast? Study dot com. That sounds like a pretty reliable source. Let's look at study dot com. <laughs> The half-staff flag. You're driving down the street and notice that flags uh, at the local government building and schools are half-staff. You ask yourself, why do they do that? You might ask, is that flag ever not at half-staff anymore? <laughs> the de- this is exactly. The de- tradition of the American flag being flown at half-staff is something we're all familiar with, but not everyone understands why. At the most basic level, the flag is a symbol of national mourning or remembrance. Okay. So mourning and remembrance. It is most frequently flown at half staff when a national figure dies, but it can also be lowered as a sign of sympathy or support for foreign nations going through periods of mourning. So it has been used for political purposes as well. (laughs) Hmm. Still, the flag is an important symbol, so the meaning of the half staff isn't something we should only half understand. Um, True that. Yeah. So why do we do this? The half staff tradition has developed uh, important meaning over time, but its exact origins are a little unclear. Many historians point to a British expedition in Canada in 1612 aboard the ship Hearts Ease. The captain James Hall was killed by an uh, a spear. I N U I T Inuit. Yep. Yep. Uh, up like in the uh, Arctic Circle. Is that a, a nationality of? Yeah, it's, uh, indigenous, you know, kind of commonly known as Eskimos. Okay, uh, and the crew lowered. How do you know that? That's <laughs> that's a random piece of knowledge, right there. <laughs> uh, you're not Eskimo, are you? Nope, nope. Uh, and the crew lowered the ship's flag to half mast. They may have partly been to signal to those who had gone inland that something had gone wrong. But sailor superstitions may also have had a role, according to tradition. Ship's flag was put at half mast to make room for the invisible flag of death. Okay. In fact, when the ship returned to London, the ship's flag was still at half mast, implying that the crew was still uh, sailing under death's flag. Whatever the origins, the tradition, tradition became more widely embraced over time, particularly by sailors. One of the first uh, accounts we had of this practice in American history. Uh, it's from 1799 when the Navy Department ordered all of its ships to lower their flags to half mass upon the death of George Washington. Hmm. The tradition continued spreading from a maritime practice to a national one, but remained informal until President Dwight Eisenhower issued Proclamation 3044, legal, legally standardizing the custom in 1954 for the national flags of all federal buildings. The current rules regarding the treatment of the national flag at half-staff can be found in the United States Code Title IV, Chapter 1, Section 7, in case you're ever interested. I'm sure that's some great reading. (laughs) (laughs) Some dynamic radio (laughs) reading right there. (laughs) So it says, so exactly how does this practice work today? According to the formal rules in the U.S. Code, the President of the United States may issue an order for national flags to be lowered to half-staff in times of national mourning. That's who officially makes a decision to lower the flags. However, the state or territorial governors may also order the national flag to be lowered to half-staff throughout their region alone in the event that a local politician, leader, or public figure dies. So... 
it is possible to see the national flag lowered to half staff in one state but not others in remembrance of the state leader. While this is a formal law, there's no penalty for breaking it, and there is a tradition of state officials who don't have the authority to lower flags doing it as well. Uh, if this occurs out of good intentions and honest misunderstandings of f flag protocol, it is almost always overlooked. <clears throat> and then I can't read anymore because it won't give me the rest of the article. <laughs> <laughs> is this one of those you got to sign up for? Pay a dollar to learn more about flag law. I guess. To unlock this session, you must be a study.com member. Create your account. Fuck that. <laughs> so, I mean, that kind of gives us an idea. Uh, I mean, I don't guess it's, you know, completely out of tradition, but really I don't think that's what flying the flag at half staff or half mass was intended for. Uh, not for, for mass shooting. Now the state could, you know, Boulder, Colorado could do it. You know, I could see that them doing it, but not on a national level. Yeah. Anyway, I mean, some people may think I'm a cold hearted bastard for saying that, but <laughs> again, you know, if you use it for every every little thing that's not intended for, then it cheapens the meaning of, of what it actually stands for and represents. Yep. Yep. Uh, that's what all that long diatribe was about. <laughs> <laughs> I could have just summed it up, couldn't I? <laughs> so those are kind of my jack wagon. So what about what about you, Chris? Who's your jack wagon? Number one on my list today is uh, Facebook for yet again unpublishing Mr. Guns and Gear. They really don't like that dude. What has he done now? <laughs> um he spoke his mind lot. yeah exactly he does a lot of truth telling and helps sell a lot of guns with uh all the deals he posts and uh facebook hates both those things so <sighs> so they shut him down he's he's like wiped off of facebook he's in facebook jail or is he just completely shut down as of right now, fully unpublished. Uh, I was chatting with him last evening, and uh, he's got a, a contact there he's trying to work with. We're talking to uh, our contact there, trying to get it turned on. And I think by the end of last night, it at least showed in review as opposed to just completely disappeared. Uh -huh. But uh, we shall see. So he couldn't even access it? Nope. No, zero access initially. By the end of the day, he can see the page, just can't do anything with it. And nobody else can see it. So you've got a contact at Facebook? Yes, sir. Oh, wow. So you guys yeah, you guys are you're in the know. You're all pretty important. <laughs> Facebook and YouTube, we have some uh, decent representation now, thankfully. Okay, so I know who to go to when I have issues, if I have issues. <laughs> I've not really had any issues other than them... Um, choking us down. Yep, just horribly throttling the reach. Yes, exactly. Yep. Um, Unfortunately, that's super common in the in the gun space for any uh, social media and account. not allowing us to boost. Yep, it won't even take our money. <laughs> yep. Even though they give us the option to do it, they're like, no, denied. I'm trying, like you really don't share like affiliate links or anything that is specifically designed to sell a gun either. Well, I just, I do my discount codes for our sponsors, oh, you know, that's right. just that, our, just our sponsors. So. And, you know, I'm always putting up pictures and videos of shooting yep. guns and, you know, things like that. But I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what to do. Yeah. Big tech hates, uh, hates guns. That's for sure. I don't know why. Just don't know. Just don't get it. No. Uneducated is what it is. Guns. And, like, it's so fun. I love shooting. It's so fun. <laughs> uh, but, no, I mean, that's the thing. It's just it's education. Um, it's the uneducated trying to control and um, do away with something that they don't understand. That they have no understanding, they, and they don't have any desire to. Right. It's just go away because I got no use for you, you know. It's just right. like me with, like, social media when it first started. I was the, the same opinion. It's like, just go away. <laughs> it, I, was, I resisted for as long as I could. I finally created a social media account when I had a band that I cared about and <laughs> trying to promote that. Uh, it went absolutely nowhere, but, yeah. uh, but we tried. Well, that's the only reason I started one was you know, for Talking Lead. 
Yep. Um, we had the Facebook page originally, and then Instagram came sometime after Facebook because they weren't at the yep. same time, and um, was resistant as I could be on that for as long as I could be. Um, but finally, eventually, you know, put one up and we're doing it. You know, same thing with like, um, what's the new, the parlor. Yep. You know, it, it was a new one and I just was like, no, I don't need another one. <laughs> but yes. then, you know, you hear about everything that Instagram and Facebook is doing to our industry and the parlor says, you know, they don't, they allow everything. And yep. then so we go there and then what happens? You know, they got turned right off, didn't they? Right. They got, they got shut down. And in my opinion, it was illegally. Yeah. But they are back up and running now, correct? Yes, they are. And we are back on there. So, Leadheads, if you're Parlor, uh, I'm going to do my best to start posting more on Parlor now. It's just one of those things I got to get in the habit of doing. Yep. I got a routine. It's like when I post, and I got to go here, then I got to go here. And now I got another step. So, I wish there was a way to just like, do them all, you know? One, <laughs> It'd be so much easier. It would. It would be so it's, much easier. You're right. There's a ton now. I mean, there's Parlor, Rumble, Minds.com, The Jump, TikTok, uh, TikTok. TikTok makes me feel like such an old dude. I've never even looked at it. <laughs> I've opened it like three or four times, and every time I'm immediately just like confused and overwhelmed. I'm like, yeah, no, this is. It's clear I'm in my early 40s now. Yeah. Well, how do you think I feel? I'm 50s. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a whole decade older than you, so. <laughs> Uh, but I try, you know, I try, uh, I rely on people like you and some of these younger generations to keep me honest. <laughs> of course, like we were talking earlier, you know, Sean, Sean yep. Heron, uh, he keeps us pretty good and up to date. Such a good dude. So yeah, definitely a good jack wagon. Uh, they've made the jack wagon train before, um, but, I don't doubt it. <laughs> but it, it's, it's good to let people know that they're continuing their buffoonery and jack yep. wagonness. Definitely. I'm sure they're, they've uh, well earned every appearance on the jack wagon train. Yeah. So what you listeners can do to help us is when we make a post, like it, comment on it. Comments help a lot. Yep. Uh, and then and then reshare it. You yep. Know, tag somebody, tag a friend, uh, and then reshare that post, and that really helps us get past this. Um, what do they call it? When they're when they're choking us down, black something. Oh, like blacklisted or something like that, or uh, yeah, there's a name for it. I can't remember what it's called. But no, I think you bring up a really good point though. Like all those channels out there that you like, respect, want to support, even if you can't do it financially for whatever reason, if you just want to give the most basic support to channels you like and care about and want to know more of, subscribe, interact like the post, comment on them, share them, tag your friends, like anything you can do to create interaction on the channels you care about will help them grow their reach and uh, get visibility and sort of break out of that little prison there. They're exactly. All and if they've got a newsletter, sign up for the newsletter because that's another way for them to reach out to you if something like Facebook happens and they, sh you know, they completely get shut down. Yep. You know, and then they're like, what happened to to Mr. Guns and Gear, like you're talking about. Well, if you're on yep. his newsletter, you know, he can still send the emails out and then you can keep up. And then I'm sure there's, you know, some sort of explanation as to, to what's going on. But, you know, with the, the environment, the way it is against the 2A community, Instagram, Facebook, uh, tweet with Twitter, Twitter, I don't even do yep. Twitter. Um, but if you, if you sign up for the newsletters, you go to the websites, uh, do all of the social medias, you know, sign up for all those. Maybe you're not on Twitter, but go ahead. Or maybe you've got a Twitter account, but you don't do it. Go ahead and sign up for it because yep. that just helps us stay in touch with you. Yep. Um, it's not that we, we like those platforms or we support them because I don't. I wish they would all just blow up and go away. Um, but that's how we stay in touch with you, our listeners. So. Exactly. That's the world we're in. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, um, did I have another jack wagon that I was going to talk about? We talked about the flags. We talked about the shooters, the mass shooting, trying to you know, kind of get everybody caught up. 
Have you ever watched that show? Uh, and it had Carrie Washington. She was like the main chick, and it was like a, a po- uh, was it uh, political something about the White House? Yeah, something about you know she she was a a political fixer or something. Damages, maybe. Damage? No, what damages? I think to, I know the show you're talking about. I'm gonna have to look it up now. Carrie Washington, scandal. Scandal. Yep. Scandal. So, um, Tia like used to watch that. She loved that show, and that's the only reason I got started watching it because she was watching it, so I had to watch it. But I kind of got into it because it was kind of good. Yeah. Uh, but they had this uh, press secretary. It was like her her assistant got on as press secretary. And you're going to see where I'm going with this, so just bear with me. <laughs> you know, there's a reason I'm doing this. <laughs> yes, Darby Stanchfield is the actress's name. She played Abby. Yep. And Abby was like the White House press secretary. If you look at her and you look at this new press secretary... It's like that's Abby. <laughs> <laughs> they they like it's like as soon as I saw her, I was like, "That's Abby from Scandal, isn't it?" <laughs> they got her straight from Central. I was Cast. like, they just went ahead and hired the the actress. It's like <laughs> I'm not a real press secretary, but I played one on TV, <laughs> 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 kind of deal. But that was just an observation. I'm not saying that uh, she makes the jack wagon train or anything. But she may, she may be a douche. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know who the the press secretary is right now. Yeah, I had her up here. I had a picture of her. That's why I brought it up. So that's our jack wagons. If you've got a jack wagon that you want to submit, we'll read your jack wagon on air. I don't think I've received any. I may have, uh, but I haven't seen any recently. But talking at gmail dot com. Send your jack wagons. Uh, and then we're going to do our heroes. So if you got a hero also, send those in. Uh, but let's talk about our heroes. Let's go ahead and jump on our heroes, Chris. Who's your Leadhead Brigade hero? So I'd, I'd love to give a big shout out to um, Kurt and Jesse from Blue Alpha Gear. Uh, I haven't talked to either of them in a really long time, but they got hit I haven't away. either, man. Right. I mean, the lack of events I means I haven't seen almost anybody in exactly. a long time. But uh but really good dudes. They're the two owners of Blue Alpha Gear. Um, they make good belts and shirts and hats and all sorts of kind of like soft goods. Um, mm-hmm. Their town got hit with a crazy tornado a couple days back. Oh, shoot. And those two guys went out. They volunteered their factory as like a rally point for volunteers. They organized a bunch of people and they went out and took care of their neighborhood. And uh, that's like that's what we need more of. Absolutely. Um, do you know where they where they're located? Yep, they're, uh, I believe it's Noonan, Georgia. I could have the name of that town wrong, but I know it's in Georgia, somewhere outside of Atlanta. Down in Georgia, yeah, we got hit with those storms here too, uh, pretty bad. Actually, one touched down um, a few streets over from me, and it didn't. It was in a non-populated area. Thank goodness. No, yep. uh, but there were some areas here in Tennessee also that they. I mean, we're always getting hit with tornadoes here. We're like tornado central down here <laughs> yeah man it's a it's a weird area that uh you got the hot coming up off the gulf and cold from the north and the mountains holding stuff in it's uh gets aggressive yeah yeah definitely you know we had those big storms in nashville uh oh yeah last year <laughs> early last, last year. year yeah yep and uh the sheepdog impact assistance group uh yep. got together a disaster recovery team came down here i joined them and we did some tree cutting and tree hauling and moving. And, uh, it's, you know, it's good work. Uh, it's good for the soul. So if you get an opportunity to help one of these organizations out, definitely uh, do it. Jump on board. Cheap Dog Impact mm-hmm. Assistance. Uh, they travel all over the, the United States. They even go to other countries and, and help out. So if you've got some sort of uh, expertise, um, give them a call. I'm sure they could use your services. Yep. It's uh, sheepdogia.org. You can get in touch with them. Good stuff. So heroes, you know, I haven't really thought about any heroes. Um, was I talking about one before we got started? You were, weren't you? <laughs> I thought I was. 
thought I was talking about somebody I wanted to be a hero. Hmm. Let's look at my tabs. Definitely not Zillow. <laughs> That's another jack wagon. They, they ruined the real estate market. With their wildly inaccurate Zestimates? Yes, exactly. <laughs> it's like, where are you getting this from? So I don't know. I don't know who my hero was. I've lost it. <laughs> that happens. There's so much going through my brain right now, Chris. There's so much. Um, was it? No, wasn't that. Wasn't guns.com. Do you ever go to guns.com? Mm-hmm. I was just on there the other day. They have a bunch of... Uh like crazy like old school like safari hunting rounds like 458 lot and 500 nitro oh here's an article on the uh the the ati schmeiser 60 round ak magazine which i've been i've talked about it i, I released an instagram video on this the other day yep. american tactical imports is exclusive importer for the famous schmeiser firearm company of germany let's see if they're giving they're not giving a review on it so I actually shot it semi-auto and full auto. And these things are a booger bear to load. And if you don't <laughs> yep. if you don't pay attention as you're loading them, you can get them off track very easily. Are they uh, straight mags? Well, not straight. Curved mags or are they drums? They're curved mags. Yep. Yeah, they're the banana. Um, oh, is it the one that goes almost all the way up? No, no. They're like they're like almost triple stacked. They're they're very they're oh, wide. Yeah. Yep. I know the one you're talking about. Okay, I'm with you. I've got one in here somewhere. I don't know where I put it. It might be out in the garage. But anyway, um, so because they're like triple stacked, uh, if you bump it or something like that, it could it could easily kick one out of out of position. Yep. Yep. Uh, but I did shoot it semi-auto. Put a couple of around a couple of mags through. Um, some AKs the other day and semi-auto shot fine. Didn't have any problems with it. Uh, and then I did a full, full auto and it didn't like full auto. No. <laughs> it didn't like full auto at all. No, it didn't, but I'm going to take it out again. Try it again. It's just, they're so hard to load. Yeah. You know, I even tried it with uh, a load assister. Yep. And it's still, I mean, it was just as hard as doing it with your thumbs. I mean, that's a lot of spring to compress. It is. It is a lot of spring. Now, if they could come up with some sort of a, a load assist with it, yep. uh, I think they would, they, you know, they would probably get a better, they, they might perform better. I don't know. So it sounds like right now that thing is a range toy, not a uh, actual, like, legitimate defensive. I wouldn't, no, I would, at this point in time, I would not rely on that for life and death. No. Yep. Uh, but that's just my initial take on it right now. I still, I still going to take it out and try uh, shooting some more stuff, and we'll see what happens. They also sent me an AR one. I've got an AR one also. Yep. I haven't tried it yet. So uh, a two two three five five six, sixty round uh, yep. straight magazine. It's not a drum. So you know, an AK, AK is one of the few things I don't own yet. What? I know. I can't I know believe that. I. uh I actually just, I was just down in Florida with uh, Brandon Herrera and I put myself on the uh, waiting list. So next run he has, I'm getting one of his under folders. Okay. That should be a good one. Yep. I'll tell you what though, you want to get a really good one. You get the ODS 1775. I don't know if you can see yep. it back there, but worth every penny. Yeah. They are worth every penny and they're only going up in price. So. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. Seven six two three nine is about the only thing you can find that's still even close to reasonable too for ammo. Yeah, well, you can't find any ammo now, especially after this this yeah. last this last shooting. I mean, the the pandemic wiped everything out, and the the riots. You know, yep. when we went through that, and that put everybody behind like five years on for ammo sure. supply, and then now with this, with the gun bans and threatening of, you know, these new laws. I went to the store the other day. I just wanted to see what the shelves look like. Yep. I like doing that from time to time. You know, I'll go to Academy. I'll go to Outdoorsman's. I'll go to Bass and just, you know, see yep. what things are looking like, what prices are going for, and bear. <laughs> Nothing. Yeah. And the guns were the same way. But, you know, they were starting to come back a little bit. You know, people were starting to get the inventory and 
yeah, I mean, things were looking promising. Looked like you know they were starting to get inventory back in, and and then this just completely wiped it out again. So, yep. Uh, yep. But, but it's one of those things that oh, I'm terrible with sayings. And I was doing this last episode too. It's like I got all these sayings, and I they come to me from time to time. But when I need them, I can't ever remember them what they <laughs> are. But the gist of it is, um, if you're preparing, you're too late, kind of thing. Yep. I don't know. I'll think of it in yep. a minute. If you're preparing for the chaos that's already happening, you're too late. Yeah. But this was this was like this guy said it good. <laughs> he, <laughs> he had a better way of saying it. That was like yep. ah. And I was like, I'm gonna I'm gonna use that next episode. That's, <laughs> that's what I get for not writing shit down. Yep. Uh but yeah, I mean if 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 you haven't already prepared, then you're too late. You should have already sure. been prepared. Yep. So I don't really have any heroes. I just I saw this article when I was looking for heroes on the ATI. Uh, I've done some research with it. I wanted to see if the firearms news actually I was taught they're just advertising it. So they're just saying it's out there, it's available. My initial testing is still up in the air. Yep. I'll put it I'll put it that way. But it semi auto, yep. the AK mag, it did work. Um it did work good. Good. But for the I don't know, the effort of loading those things. <laughs> I just I'd just rather do a mag switch, you know? Yep. <laughs> Yeah, saving yourself a lot of time there. You are. I mean, you really are. We did. We were talking uh, on on one of the AK corners. Had some. I did competition shooting last episode. We talked about AKs and competition shooting. And one of the shooters was Kyle Moore. And Kyle was talking about how he starts off with like a forty round mag. You know, he'll start off with the the higher capacity mag, and then when he does his his mag changes, then he's you know doing the thirty round mags. Yeah, he's not carrying the forty round. <laughs> with him each time, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they get awkward. He's certainly a little, little more unruly. Yeah, yeah. So, th- I mean, this might be a good solution for that if you can uh, find a good, consistent feed with him. Yep. Something yep. Like that's that. the risk, though, because I mean, you have a misfeeding competition. That's going to cost you a whole lot of time. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yep. So that's that's my stand. I know I had a lot of you uh, leadheads asking about. Uh, my experience with it. And that's so far my experience with it. It's more to come, more to come. All right, Chris. Yes, sir. We're getting the train out of here. Lead force one is taking off <laughs> with our one hero. If I think of who mine was, we'll bring it back and, and load them up. Uh, but we want to talk about Leviathan. Yeah. Leviathan group, because, um, it's very interesting to me, and I think my listeners will be interested uh, too, as as to what you guys are doing. And it's it's one of those things where you guys are in the the industry that hates our industry, <laughs> <laughs> but they right. glorify our industry. But then at the same time, they demonize it. You know, so yep. l- talk about Leviathan Group. You know who you are, what you do. Sure. It's funny. So Leviathan, our it's our, uh, our logo is an octopus, and it's pretty accurate because there's uh, we're up to at least five companies now, and probably be eight by by the time we're done. Um, but so Leviathan Group is kind of like the central hub of all these companies, and for all intent and purposes, we're a digital marketing agency that is almost entirely focused in the firearms, outdoor, adventure, hunting, overlanding, kind of all things dude space. Yeah. Um, and, you know, like all the normal things you expect to come with that photo, video, graphic design, web design, PR, you know, all the normal marketing stuff. But then where we really start to separate from every other marketing agency on earth is that we've got Leviathan tribe, which is our talent management agency there. We're representing, I don't know, somewhere in the neighborhood of 93, 94 channels, uh, covering 28 million subscribers across all channels, all platforms, Oh wow! a uh, bunch of big names on there, a bunch of up and comers, some actors, some pro athletes, but all of them gun friendly. And then we've got Leviathan Defense, which is our firearms manufacturer. We're, there's a couple things upcoming soon that I can't talk about quite yet, but soon. Oh, come uh, on. Come on. I'll have you talking about it before it's over with. So you guys <laughs> that, actually manufacture firearms? Yep. I did not yep. know that. Well, and so it actually ties into the last part, which is uh, 
Loki Film Services and our Prop Culture Program, which is where we're placing our clients' uh, products in TV, movie, and video games. And for all of our clients, they're getting, you know, priority placement on main characters and, you know, all the branding stays on and all the important stuff that makes those things actually valuable for a company. But what we were struggling with is, you know, the 18 dudes in the back with very basic black ARs. Who wants to supply those, right? Like, mm-hmm. there's no value to any company being the background AR. So we're like, well, let's go ahead and make our own. And uh, so we started putting ours on uh, in all of those positions, or if we couldn't find something to fill a, a niche. Um, so that's that's where Leviathan Defense was born from and uh, kind of blossomed from there. So are you making inert? Firearms? Is that what they are? Or are they actually working firearms, but you just convert them for the for the props? Yep. Yeah, so when if they become a prop gun, uh, so let's just say like the, the ODS, uh, what was it, 1775? Yeah, ODS 1775. Yeah. Welcome to let's Fifth say, Yep, we'll say that one got picked for a roll, right? Uh, like we just finished the, all the product selections for, um, we'll call it a Keanu Reeves movie. Okay, uh, we'll just say... An upcoming Keanu Reeves, Reeves movie. Yep. And uh, let's just say that that Occam got picked. Uh, we would get a couple of them. We'd send them to the uh, directors for show and tell. They'd you know look at them. The prop guys would look at them. Some of the main actors, the stunt guys, uh, all those kind of folks would check them out. They'd all agree they want to go with it. And then a couple things happen. They'll take them. They'll immediately make them full auto because movies love full auto. Uh, and then they will get, uh, rubber blanks made of them that, uh, look, I mean, just one for one real, it's crazy how real they look. And those are for all the stunt scenes. So if you're rolling around, you're rolling on this soft rubber gun and not breaking a rib. Yeah. Uh, and then the one they changed to full auto, actually they'll do two. They they'll do one that's the main gun that's actually used. And then a the second one is a backup for in case that one goes down, but, uh, they'll blank it. And that's usually just, uh, an adapter in the barrel. Okay. So, and then generally they're making their own blank rounds. So they make their own rounds? Yep, just because every gun functions a little differently, so they'll usually tailor the rounds to the firearm to make sure it cycles accurately and reliably. Okay. So so let's say they take the, the ODS-1775 and they're doing the, the rubber gun. How are they? Yep. Do you know how they're doing that, how they're making it? It's uh, like a computer like scan or something like that. Is that what they're doing? 3D uh, printing? (laughs) No, it's not even that. It's, it's old school. It's, they uh, just do a a silicone mold. So it's just a reverse um, sculpture basically. You know, they'll, they'll put the, uh, the, the medium around it, Uh get the cavity, you know, they'll pop that out, take the real gun back out, put that cavity back together, fill it up with uh, this rubber material. Kind of how they make face molds for people. Exactly. Really, really similar to that. Okay, yep. I guess. And you. then get an artist to paint it to make it look super accurate. Yeah, that's cool. But they're not worried about the innards on one of those. It's just the outside nope. they're looking for doing the the, yeah. the kind of stunt I, work. Depending on which guy does it, sometimes they'll have like uh, like the selector switch will be movable. Uh, sometimes they'll have removable magazines, stuff like that. Yeah. So now these guns. Uh, that you guys are supplying for the for the background, um, you're saying that they they're real guns, functional firearms. A lot of these movies are in California. How are they able to get these firearms uh, into California for for these movies? How are they getting around their their laws there? So each movie has an armorer who's got an FFL SOT, and then you can apply. If you're in California, you have to apply for a uh, California firearms license number, uh, which is very specific, super, super controlled, but it gives you access to, you know, magazines over 10, um, detachable magazines, all the things that, uh, all the citizens of California should be allowed to have, but are right. So this special license, that's how they're able to get the full auto, the, the real, What's that butt? They can't have butt stocks or something. The grip has to be connected. Oh, oh, yeah, to yeah. It doesn't have to have that weird space grip that all the California guns have now. Yeah, and that button, they, the the mag release button. Bullet button. Bullet yeah. button. 
So, um, so they get around that because they've got this special license, and it's probably exactly. just for the movie industry, isn't it? I think uh, certain certain dealers and retailers can get it as well. Yeah, is my understanding. But that that part I'm definitely not an expert on. Gotcha, uh, gotcha. But uh, yeah, so we send them all semi-auto. So we'll send everything basically stock, and then they'll convert it to full auto on site. You having a party? <laughs> Everybody is uh, apparently hanging out right so- right outside my office door currently. <laughs> is it quitting time? Is that what it is? <laughs> We're getting awful close. Getting off close to quitting time. Yep. So that that's cool. I mean, apparently you're working with big names. Name, name some past movies, TV shows that Leviathan has provided the, the guns for. Sure. Um, let's see. What's been recent? Um, we had a bunch of stuff in um, some of the uh, like Marvel Universe movies. Oh, yeah, like... Captain America and Winter Soldier. Yep. Bunch of those ones. Uh, a lot of stuff with The Rock. Uh, we did a bunch of stuff with Will Smith. Like, we actually, here, I've got the gun from I Am Legend. Like, the oh, one he was. I love that movie. The whole time. Yep. We've got his gun here. Um, what else have we done? We did a bunch of video games. Um, TV now, when you, shows. Do, when you do video games. Yep. So I, I take it you send them a real gun and then they're they're doing their digital scan or whatever of that that firearm. It's pretty interesting, man. That that one was actually surprisingly more interesting to me than the movie stuff because uh, they'll take it and it's generally about a thousand rounds put through it, and the whole thing is completely digitally mapped, start to finish, so that once it goes into that game, it's as close to a real simulation as possible of using that specific firearm. So, like, you know, the muzzle flash is accurate, uh, recoil impulse, um, you know, reload dynamics, uh, all the ergonomics, how flat does it stay when you shoot, uh, you know, where do optics actually sit on it, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So. And especially now moving into the um, virtual reality games, it's crazy accurate. Like we just did one for Microtech where, uh, you know, the virtual reality ones, they generally have two handles with buttons on them. Mm -hmm. And just like a real Microtech, when you slide that button forward, the knife pops open. Oh, cool. Yeah. So it's a bunch of stuff like that that's pretty interesting. Which video games? You in like the Call of Duties or any of those? Uh, we've done little bits here and there with those ones. Most of the ones we've done have been um, like the kind of hardcore PC games. Okay. Um, let's see, what did I just work on? We're working on Scum, um, Anchorage, uh, Day Before. Man, there's like 15 of them in play right now. <laughs> I, I honestly don't remember them all. Now, are these... Are these um video game companies movie com- are they buying your your guns or are you, they just like renting them usually renting they're renting them yep yep it really depends on the placement in the movie and there there's a ton of kind of moving parts on that mm-hmm. um in some cases we're providing them to the movie at no charge and trade for that like perfect placement on a main character mm-hmm. um so it's it's very very situation dependent. Gotcha. Um, so some of the movies you talk about Will, some of the Will Smith movies. Um, what was one of the Will? Was it you said I Am Legend? Did you guys provide that that firearm? Yep. So yep. is the yep. AR that he's using to deer hunt with? Is that the one? Yeah, exactly. It's got that big old flashlight on it and the uh, ACOG. Yeah. Yep. And that was uh, an actual real working uh, gun. Yeah. Yep, and you got Matter. you guys you guys got it there as a movie prop now. Yep, and I mean, there's I've heard a rumor that uh, you can remove that uh, blank firing adapter, and it's just a real gun. <laughs> well, I would think so, and there's no law against that, right? Or is there? No, there's not. No, it, it's perfectly legal. It's all transferred. Yeah. Um, so that's cool. What else? For Will Smith, we also did uh, Suicide Squad. Oh, okay. And we don't have the real gun here, but we've got the rubber mold of his gun, that like big crazy red and gold one. Yeah. Yep, we've got both of those. Um, now, some of these uh, like real crazy guns, like they're in Aliens and stuff like that, 
Mm-hmm. Um, have you guys done any, you know, like out of the norm kind of guns that do they actually work or are they just like, all right, this is just for looks kind of thing? We've seen some of the stuff we've seen get like super crazy modifications. Um, so they'll do the mods themselves, not, yeah. not you guys. Okay. Generally speaking, everything we send, basically the request from every movie is bone stock black because they'll take it, they'll mod it out, they'll add stuff to it, they'll paint it, they'll do whatever they need and they'll do it exactly the way they want it as opposed to like somebody else's guess at it. Yeah. Very cool. Yep. So now do Man. you do you guys get the opportunity to go on set? Yep. Yep. Yeah, pretty much almost every movie we do, uh, usually Jake, the owner of Leviathan, will go out. Sometimes, like, you know, if we have a client who's got a ton of placements in it, we'll bring the client out, let them see their stuff in action, which is always kind of cool. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, get some good behind-the-scenes stuff. Uh, like I know last year, yeah, right before COVID, he was out in uh, Scotland for filming um, Fast and Furious 9. Oh, okay, nice. He's out there for about a week. That's cool. So yep. you guys actually get like credit on some yep. of them. Some of them you don't, I guess, if you're like the background yep. or whatever. Probably half half or more we don't get any credit on screen, which is, you know, fine. I think the first one we got on screen credit listed as an advisor was uh Bloodshot with Vin Diesel. Oh yeah, I did I saw that. I watched that movie. It was a pretty good movie. We still have uh several uh bricks of fake cocaine. now do you guys supply the the fake cocaine too (laughs) in that case we did really yep that's all movies ask we figure it out so you're not just a firearms prop you do you do you do film props sometimes it's like that's certainly not common for us but it happens from time to time okay was this how leviathan got started was in the, the the film industry yeah, pretty much. Um, so basically, uh, I'm probably going to tell it poorly because it's not my story. But uh, <laughs> but uh, Jake, the owner, he was uh, – first he was at Cabela's uh, where he did their uh, TV show, their hunting show back when that still existed. And then when the Bass Pro Cabela's merger happened, he left there. He was with Travel Channel for a while and really got his feet into the uh, TV, movie, et cetera, industry. And then was at Trigicon here in Michigan for a while, uh, where he got Trigicons on almost everything uh, in every movie. And then when he left there, kind of, you know, some of those contacts still needed stuff in this world, but didn't really know what they needed. Like, that's the biggest disconnect. Like, like you mentioned earlier, Hollywood makes their money glorifying people getting shot in the face, but they're generally kind of anti-gun and don't really know a whole lot about it. Yeah. Uh, so there's a lot of relying on folks like us to actually get the products that make sense. So um, you guys started off in into the, the movie industry, and what was your next step? How did he get involved with you know, the marketing side of things and representation and, you know, kind of the agency type stuff. Yep. So, uh, you know, doing the movie stuff, got more and more contacts on the uh, firearms industry side and then recognized the need in uh, folks for more exposure on, you know, pick a product, doesn't matter really what it is. And uh, he knew some of the influencers from, uh, or content creators, whatever whatever you want to call them, from uh, his time at Trigicon and started working that and then that was right about the time that uh youtube demonetization armageddon happened where like everybody lost uh a huge chunk of the income they were making because prior to that google for i mean if to put it as simply possible google was basically subsidizing the firearms marketing firearms industry marketing budget uh by paying out on rev share and adsense and stuff like that on youtube yeah and then they pulled that rug out, and uh, so there was all these channels out there who had, you know, good credibility, great audiences. People were looking to them for information, but now they weren't getting paid for working, which, you know, as a, a proud capitalist in America, an American, like, that bothers me. Because <laughs> if you're going to go to work, you should get paid for it. That's kind of the whole deal. That's right. That's right. And so... Uh, you know, he, he kind of recognized that hole and uh, helped organize some of these channels so that, 
you know, they were getting paid for the work they were Well, if you ever run across a, a movie or, you know, TV show or something that is looking for a, a, a podcast prop, <laughs> <laughs> I got you. I think All Talking Lead like- would be perfect in the background yeah. for, you know, one of those movies. Definitely. For sure. Hell yeah. Keep me in mind. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's I think it's fascinating. I think it's very interesting. Um, I'd met a, a gentleman uh, about two years ago at Shot Show 2019. Uh, Shot Show. His name is Rock Glotti. Do you know Rock? Yep, I do. We just shipped him a bunch of stuff. Okay. Um, just talked to him today, as a matter of fact. So. Did you really? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but Rock is kind of in that industry, so. Uh, Rock is the guy that I guess for movies gets in touch with you, right? And then, yeah, and, and works yeah. out the. We're working with him on a couple different projects right now. You know, he's a he's a good guy, really in the know. Yeah, definitely. Uh, maybe one of those Keanu Reeves movies that you're you were talking about. <laughs> mm. I, I couldn't say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I know you got some NDAs and stuff like that, but. Um, what's something maybe that you could talk about? Maybe there's a new movie that's getting ready to be released or, you know, something like that. It's already been advertised. What, um, what, where can we look for Leviathan's firearms? We're watching the movie and go, Oh, that's the, the gun they were talking about on talking lid. So fast and furious nine is due out in April. Um, it was, it was actually due out last spring, but yeah. then, all the movie theaters shut down and they pushed it a year, which was probably the right call. Yeah. Um, but, uh, we are responsible. That was the first one in like, that I was super aware of that we were responsible for every single firearm and almost every piece of tactical gear in it. Oh, sweet. Okay. Yep. So you'll see a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, grand power, like the Strybogs in there. I think there's some Excaliburs. There's some RX stuff in there. It's because we were working. Uh, we worked with uh, Global Ordnance on a lot of it. Okay, nice. And then, uh, yeah, we got them in. There's a bunch of Leviathan Defense. That's actually the movie that kind of spurred Leviathan Defense. Um, and then uh, what else do we get in there? Until it comes out, that's probably about as much as I can say. <laughs> So I'm sure there's like tactical vest and yep. uh, do you guys do the magazines and stuff like that for the guns and the lights yep. and all that stuff, whatever yes. accessories are on there. Absolutely. There's a bunch of in force holsters, uh, belts, yeah, tack belts. Holsters. Yep. I just got uh, belts from safe life defense heading to somebody. Um, let's see. Actually, I got a plate carrier right here. I don't even know what it's from i can't remember now but this one was from one of the movies we worked on we've got about 50 of them sitting in the back so what do you do with all these after the movie's done i mean you rent them out do you sell them afterwards or do you just keep them in inventory and then use them for another movie or what do you do with all this stuff depending on what it is um the collectible stuff usually stays here i mean our offices here are basically a museum full of props yeah i gotta come up there man Absolutely. Next time you're up for real. Yeah, we got to do the show from up there. We'll do a, we'll do like a live show, or we'll do, or at least we'll video it. Maybe not live. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. There's a that would be awesome and super doable. Yeah, that would be fun. I'd like to see your props. Now, uh, these props. Do you get the the stars to sign them? Do they sign off on them? You know, do they yep. put their signatures on Just, there. It's a it's a mixed bag. Some of them are, some of them aren't. Um, we got you know all the certificates and stuff like that on a lot of them. But uh, yeah. for the most part, I'd say about half of them are, are signed by actors, but almost all of them are, are on screen props. What about some TV shows that you've done stuff on? Have you done The Walking Dead? Yep, tons on The Walking Dead. Um, how else? how much does it piss you off to see? Um on a TV show or a movie, the actor mishandling the, the, the firearm or knife or, or kit, so whatever it is. We, uh, I, yeah, all the time. Like the one I see the most, I think is the people still teacuping a pistol. Oh my God. I hate that. <laughs> I so like, hate have you that. ever shot a real gun in your life? I'm guessing no. Cause if you did, you wouldn't hold it like that. Uh, uh-uh. no, I, uh, the teacup is one of the worst. Yeah, definitely. That one's tough. 
<laughs> the occasions where you'll see like a backwards optic that's hard to take. Yeah. I remember that yeah. once on The Walking Dead. I don't know if they've done it more than that, but I remember Herschel, oh. one of Herschel's yep. scenes. He had a, I think it was an aim point. I can't remember what it was, but it, it was backwards. <laughs> yep. Yep. See that. And then you'll see a lot of like, you know, six shot revolvers going 12 rounds in. Yeah. And you, you know what I really hate? My, my biggest pet peeve is all right, so they'll charge one. They'll yep. charge it, and then somebody will sneak up on them, and they charge it again. <laughs> or, or they're like they're yep. like uh, interrogating somebody, you know. Yep. And then they charge it, and then the guy doesn't give them the answer they want. And he charges it again. <laughs> yep, that's awful. And then uh, when they have a striker fired pistol, and every time they move it, it makes a noise. Yeah. If. If your striker fired gun is making that much noise, go see somebody. You got problems. You got you got a loose firing pin. Yeah, <laughs> it's gonna go off. Yeah, it's an issue. <laughs> that is not your friend. <laughs> yeah, it's stuff like that 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 really irks me. Now, is that something? And I, I don't. Maybe you guys don't care, but it's like, hey, if you're gonna use our stuff, use it properly, so- correctly. It's really, really uh, production dependent on how much input we have on that. Usually it's pretty minimal. Usually yeah. we're the stuff guys, not the uh, action guys, you know? Right. Uh, they have specific people handling that stuff, and depending on the production, they do a great job or a not-so-great job. Um, like the guy from uh, – the stunt coordinator from the whole John Wick series, JJ, is phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Um, which is why all that stuff feels so real. Well, relatively speaking. Um, but well, they know, spend, the they spend time at least for the main characters and even the, the, I guess the stunt actors or the backup actors, you know, as far as their manipulations and it's been said, you know, by many people, not just me, but, uh, you know, they're, you know, they're really accurate on the manipulation of their firearms. If it, if it runs dry after, you know, 15 rounds, yep. it runs dry after, and then they do a mag reload and the reloads are good. And of course, you know, Keanu and people like that in those movies have done some really good training. You know, they've taken the extra yep. time. They've gone to places like Taron Butler. They've gone to Keith Garcia for the shotgun yep. manipulations and, you know, reloading. And, you know, they've really sought out, especially for the main characters, but it seems like even the backup characters for a lot of these are professionals, I guess. They're definitely tightening it up for sure. It's like they're they're actually hiring, uh, you know, like people that have done that for a living. Yeah, it 100%. seems like, and it makes a difference. No, oh, yeah, it does. As far as the the real, because I don't know anything. It's, nothing takes me out of a movie more than, like you said, if you see somebody teacupping, it's like I'm really enjoying this, and then they fucking teacup a, you know. <laughs> And then that's all you can think about. Yeah, and then yeah, that's all I can think about. And then if they they do the the charging and bullets aren't coming out after they just charged it, you know, yep. uh, that yep. really irks me too. I was like, you just <laughs> <laughs> you just charged it. Uh, come on, oh, and the shotguns, the same thing with the shotguns. Rack and rack and rack and rack. Yeah, it's like they rack it before they go in, and they turn a corner, then they rack it. They turn another corner, they rack it. <laughs> yep. There's no shells coming out. Like, Apparently you're dry, dude. <laughs> yeah, quite well from what I can tell. Right, right. So so you guys don't, you know, I don't guess you're at the point now where you can say, all right, look, if you're going to use our shit, then this is how you use it. Okay. Yeah, that, unfortunately that is just not the, uh, the dynamic there. Yeah, uh, I understand that. You know, there's, there's folks with significantly more money who are very much in the driver's seat. Very cool. So, as far as the the movies and the TV shows that you that you're aware of that you guys have worked with, what's what's your favorite? Oof. Man. So, favorite to have helped source things for, or favorite to watch? To watch. It's like I am proud that. Yep our shits in that movie or that TV show. I mean, uh, 
John Wick 3 had a lot of stuff from us. And, uh, I mean, that's just cool, because that's, like, the pinnacle of gun movies, you know? Like, there is no... No, he def- no- they definitely set the bar for... Yeah. Fire. Like, there's a few that are close, but uh, nobody is above it, for sure. Yeah. Well, that's cool that you guys had a had a hand in the John Wick stuff. Yep. Yeah, that was neat. Um, then TV shows... Do like, you know Keanu? A- I have not met him. Okay. No. I think Jake has. He says he's really nice, as does everybody who's ever met him. Need to him. get him on the show. Get him on Talking I Lead. I love him. <laughs> Tell him Lefty wants him on the show. Honestly, you know who uh, I met that was a really, really big gun guy and awesome to work with was uh, Joe Montaigne from uh, Criminal Minds. Yeah, he's a big, isn't he an NRA guy? Yeah, and a, a huge, huge gun guy, competitive shooter for years. And uh, back in uh, my previous role, I got a bunch of stuff onto Criminal Minds with him. Oh, cool. And he actually let me come out the day they were filming and see it uh, all in action, which was awesome. And that's really cool because you guys can use your connections in the firearms industry to to get exposure for people in these these movies and if a movie's big like John Wick and your shit featured in there then sky's the limit on your absolutely your products yeah it gives you that like what I really like about it is it gives you that mainstream exposure so it's not just like you know gun guys talking to gun guys about gun stuff it's you're actually getting out to um, the rest of the world a little bit and you know hopefully that draws more people in because you know as somebody who is pretty invested in uh, you know the 2a community as it's how my entire family makes our living um the more people we can bring in from the outside the more diverse we can make it the more uh folks we can include in gun culture the the stronger we are yeah what's one of the biggest um in dealing with that industry Mm -hmm. you know and those type people knowing that they are you know, I quote unquote, sure. the, you know, the enemy of, of, of 2A. What's, what's one of the biggest, I guess, complaints that maybe you hear on their, their end when dealing with them? If, if you hear any at all, as far as, you know, these are like, ah, you know, I got to deal with these guys, you know, kind of thing. Or So it may just be due to the folks that we're dealing with and the relationships that have been built over years, but we really don't run into any of that. Yeah. Uh, um, just keep the politics know. out of it completely. Exactly. It's just business. It's just, you know, checking boxes, getting work done. Yeah. Um, the, really the hardest part about the movie stuff is they need everything yesterday and they need a lot of them and they need to be perfect. And so that, that part can get stressful quick, but are you guys dealing uh, strictly with modern type of uh, firearms? Or are you guys doing any historical type stuff too, like world war two, Korean, you know, uh, different. So, countries this, this is a, a hard stop because this is still super nda right. so uh we're working on a, a Shut your mouth. world war ii movie right now oh sweet yep I love and uh, we've been sourcing crazy like this is one of the ones where we're actually doing tons of props not just guns and have been having to try to find like old school world war ii shit everywhere so are you doing like vehicles and everything yep oh yep. sweet and, Plane parts, anti-aircraft stuff. Uh, Are you guys still hiring? Because I want to apply <laughs> for that job now. <laughs> right. I'll it's move to lot. Michigan now. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, this this got to be like an awesome place to work at, at Leviathan. I know you guys had an opening not too long ago. Yep. And I'll be damned. I wish I would have applied for it now. But <laughs> it was... He was like, you got to move to Michigan. And I'm like, I don't want to move to Michigan. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so... Yeah, no, uh, this has been an amazing um, move for me, that's for sure. Because, uh, let's see, I started here basically as a contractor, uh, sort of an outside sales guy back in... A couple of years ago. Right. Yeah, call it March of 19. Yeah. Um, give or take. And uh, went to full-time as the uh, like an account exec, basically. Then took over sales director, then moved up here and got promoted to uh, VP of business development. So just been growing like crazy with the company. And it went from five of us to now there's 
13 or 14. We just hired like three new people. Oh, wow. Moved into a new spot. We actually took over five units in the uh, mall of Monroe, Michigan, which is exactly <laughs> sad as it sounds. <laughs> and, uh, but we took over five units, got them completely overhauled. Now we've got a studio, awesome break room, conference room, bunch of admin offices, uh, storage for all the props, shipping department, stuff like that. Very nice. Yeah, so it's like turnkey. We can do almost everything here now, and uh, it's all nice well, and I'm, new. I'm putting my name in the hat for the next uh, position that opens up there because okay. I think I would uh, uh, reconsider moving to Michigan for for that. Or if we could work something out to where I wouldn't have to, you know, <laughs> maybe I'm you know I'm the, the the locator going out to Hollywood and there you go, yeah, you know, finding the people that need the the props and stuff, which I'm sure you don't have any problem finding. <laughs> I was gonna say, man, if we can figure that out, I would be back in West Virginia in a heartbeat. Yeah, I was like, that's a huge move for you because you moved from West Virginia to to Michigan. That's like a huge yep. culture shock, huh? Yeah, the least populated county in West Virginia, with my nearest neighbor being about a half mile away, to my nearest neighbor being about twelve feet away. So that, <laughs> that was a definite lifestyle change. But on the plus side, there's food options, uh, and they're they're open past six, so that's neat. There you go. You can actually get out and about. Yep. How are Always how speaking of how how are they on the uh, the COVID stuff? Are they pretty loosened up Michigan, there? Michigan, it's been a mixed bag. So it was a hard lockdown for I don't know, call it two months at the beginning, give or take, and then stuff sort of opened back up and then shut down again. But right now, I think restaurants are at like fifty percent capacity. Uh, you have to wear a mask unless you're sitting in a you're supposed to give a name and phone number for contact tracing at the when you check in, which I don't love. But uh, I mean, do you have to? They they ask for one. They don't do anything to verify it though. So I've been a lot of different people. Yeah, exactly. I was like, I'm not giving you my info. No. Nope, changes every time. Um, so yeah, there's that. Uh, still no. Uh, any group class, like fitness classes, stuff like that, you have to wear a mask. So jujitsu has not opened back up, which is sad. Oh my gosh! Yeah, that poor guy. He's been closed for over a year. That's ridiculous. Yep, that's ridiculous. Yep. Well, I mean, hopefully nationwide it'll start. Start. I know a lot of places have already, you know, lifted all the the mask bands and everything. Yep. Um, it's I think- funny. I was just down in Florida for uh, a video shoot for sportsman's guide and uh it was like being in a whole different country just because everything was so so much easier and oh yeah i was just talking with uh, a guy in miami before we got on the phone that's who i was talking to uh watch company something something coming maybe in the future leadhead so Mm -hmm. stay tuned um but yeah he's down in miami he's like no i mean we haven't this whole time we you know it's not been bad here pretty much everybody's been out and doing and no issues with the the shutdowns and the COVID stuff. Yep. You know, the funny part is like, I actually love quarantine. I'm so good at not interacting. with. (laughs) (laughs) It's kind of what I do anyway, you know? Exactly. Like I loved having the excuse to not go out. I just don't like being told I can't. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I gotta be honest, you know, not the shot show, uh, the NRA, uh, a couple of the other events that we normally are at and, you know, we get sponsored to be at you know, really affected us, affected me. Yep. Yeah, it's a big change. I'll be glad to see those come back. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like NRA, NRA is what, uh, September 1st, give or take. It's that first weekend in September in Houston. Of this year? Yep. So they're, they're going ahead and not bringing it back to Nashville? No. As of right now, it's in Houston, first weekend in September. And... uh the next month, the first weekend in October, is uh, USCCA Concealed Carry Expo in uh, Fort Worth. I haven't been to that one. Is that the NRA one? The NR- nope. USCC? That's the one that uh, that is they're in the, opposition of the NRA. Well, yeah, they're the ones who have had uh, some manner of concealed carry insurance forever. Then the US, or, uh, then NRA tried to knock them off and kick them out of all their events. Right. Yeah, I remember that was a big, a big deal. Yeah, shockingly, the NRA behaved poorly on that. Yes. So unlike them. Yeah, shockingly, yeah. <laughs> he says sarcastically. 
Yeah, yeah the NRA is Houston 2021, September the 3rd through the 5th. George yep. R. Brown Convention Center in Houston, Texas. Well, I guess I need to get busy on uh, finding me a, a sponsor for that, Chris. Yeah. Yeah, man. Chris? I'm not. <laughs> is I Le- hear you. Leviathan going to be set up? Uh, we won't have a booth. We'll be there uh, supporting clients. Okay. Well, you know, we could set up in one of your clients' booths. There you go. Do the do the podcast from there, like we do. Uh, we done yep, with Caltech. We done with Buck Knives. Done with Century Arms. We done with Glock. Are you uh, speaking of events? Are you going to IV eighty eight in May? Did we already talk about that? Yeah, we yeah we talked about it. Uh, so that's another good thing, I guess. You know, people that are starting to do these events and and what now they're starting to open up. Uh, so IV eighty eight announced that they are having theirs. Uh, again this year and it's going to be at the the original place where they normally did it red red hill range red hill range which yep to be honest with you that's why i didn't go last year was because it was like way further south um oh that's right yeah it was at uh what was the name of that place i can't remember it's a beautiful range but uh it was just so far away from everything yeah exactly um, so I'm I'm glad they're bringing it back to the the Red Hill. So yes, more than likely, uh, we will be there definitely. Awesome. Not I probably that. won't set up to to record or anything. I'll just be there. Yeah, just hang out like film we some normally. Stuff. Yeah, like I normally do. Get get a couple of social media shots, you know, things like that. Yep. Maybe yep. set up some future interviews. Exactly. I know I'll have a couple clients there, and one of them actually just sent me a message saying that uh, they would like to be on your show on the 13th. Well, there you go. Perfect. I like that. Nice and easy. Nice and easy peasy. Well, well let's do that then. We'll we'll get that set up. So something to look forward to there, Leadheads. <laughs> a super secret guest coming up the 13th. Yeah. Actually, we won't release the 13th. That's when we're going to record. So. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to to that interview, um, and I think you leadheads will too. It's going to be something that you're all going to want and definitely need. Yeah, and I mean, stop me if you don't want to talk about it too much here, but uh-huh. to me, um, like, is it right to talk about survival food for just a second? Well, let's 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 talk about being prepared. Yeah. Yeah. Um, exactly. Preparedness, so yeah, a lot of things. Um, you know, it's easy to own a gun and be like, okay, I'm safe now, but that's not real. No, like, a get some training because if you didn't spend at least as much on training as you did the gun, you're doing it wrong. Um, and then B, things like water, food, medical. Um, if you're not secure on any of those fronts and prepared to, you know, handle those things for yourself for at least couple weeks you're probably in trouble if things go wrong yeah you're gonna you're gonna be in big trouble and i think a lot of people especially the past two years have seen that and hopefully you lead heads have done a lot better job in preparing for shutdowns you know especially with this covid and everything shutting down and supply lines not being able to to meet their normal you know capacities and um and it, it happens every year. Something happens, whether it's a, a natural disaster or whatever it may be. Yeah. Uh, there's been enough things that's happened in our lifetime to know that you got to have supplies on hand and at least a month, you know, two yep. months of food and water and medical supplies and ammunition <laughs> yep. and yep. and guns, which I'm sure all our listeners have, uh, you know, plenty of guns to go around but i'm not sharing mine <laughs> nope. I'm not sharing my guns uh, i'll share my ammo if somebody tries to come get it you know what i mean <laughs> yep. um but but it's one of those things you can't over preach and you can't over emphasize and and we were kind of alluded to to her who our guest is going to be we're going to be talking about the the food storage side of things coming up on that episode so uh, yep. definitely something to look forward to being hungry sucks man <laughs> <laughs> well as you can see quarantine has been uh, <laughs> has been good to me 
I choose to believe those are just emergency stores. Yeah, there you go. I'm storing up. <laughs> you're, you're preparing. This, this is, is my just... winter weight, man. Come on. Winter weight. Summer's coming. Sun's out, shit. gun's out, baby. Yep. Yep. It's almost pool party season. It, my pool is open. See? It is cold as balls, but it's open. Yeah. <laughs> so we got to get you to come to Tennessee. Indeed. I like Tennessee. It, Tennessee's a great place. So, um, And they do a lot of filming here these they days, they're, and they're starting to do more. And you guys don't have income tax, and I love that. Exactly. We do not. I heard the other day that they're um, they're supposed to be doing something uh, to entice more of the the TV and movie industry to come here, as far as like tax incentives yep, and, sort of and things like that, to make it you know competitive with Atlanta because Atlanta yep. has got all kind of Marvels in Atlanta. Yep. You know all the Marvel stuffs filming down there. The MacGyver show. It's filming in Atlanta. The Stranger Things is in Atlanta. The whole Walking Dead series. Walking Dead, exactly, which I think they're done with that now, isn't it? About yeah. ready to, to spin down. They're supposed to be doing some movies and stuff of The Walking Dead. I don't know if those are ever going to come through or not. Yeah, I watched uh, I watched that show through whatever was on Netflix, so I think I'm like two seasons behind at this point. Okay. I had uh, I was like watching it religiously there for a while. And then I got off and I missed like two or three seasons. And then I started watching like season 10. Yep. And I was just like completely lost. (laughs) (laughs) Who are these people? I mean, as far as the people, yeah. But the storyline is still the same. You know, they're they're surviving, trying to kill the zombies while this pack of evil dudes are trying to kill them, you know, kind of thing. Yep. Yep. New set of evil dudes, new season. Yeah. They've got some cooler weapons too. I've noticed. Yep. I, I think they they found some cans along the way. It's crazy how many full autos those guys found. Right? All the full autos. All the they found them all. <laughs> well, I mean, like, they're just going to be lying around. Nobody's using them. All the military's <laughs> dead. <laughs> yep. So somebody's got to have them. Um, but yeah, man. Um, if when and when and if you've got like new movies and TV shows that are coming out, it's going to be featuring your stuff. Be sure to let us know. I'll let the yeah, leadheads sure. know. We'll be looking for them. And um, where can they find you guys? Are you on the social meds and all that stuff? I'm sure. Yeah. Um, so we've got there's the Leviathan Prime site, which is a bunch of the products that are for sale. Leviathan Group LLC has uh, it's like a lot of the behind the stuff, uh, behind the scenes stuff for things we're doing here. And then there's a couple others. That are all Leviathan based, but the Leviathan group uh, Instagram is probably the most interesting. Now, what was the site you said where the stuff's for sale? That's where I want to go. Uh, Leviathan Prime. Is that a, a website? Yep. Yep. There's uh, like, I know we've got, I think we've still got the, uh, the dirty girl bats that are very similar to Negan's bat from uh, Walking Dead made by the same guy. Uh, those are for sale on there. I believe there's some Thor's hammers on there. What? Y'all did the the Thor's hammer? So we've got mini ones on the site for sale right now. We've got the real one, the real Mjolnir here from Thor. How did you get that? I'll be honest. I have no idea how you got You don't know how he got that. That's That one's pretty cool. We've got uh, Captain America's shield here, which is no pretty way. cool. We've got... Uh, Thanos' original... glove. You got his gauntlet. Yeah. yeah, we've got a gauntlet that articulates. You can make it snap. And the jewels come out. Um, That's cool. We've got. Uh, I'm coming to Michigan, dude. <laughs> trying to think, what else is cool? We've got a uh, original um, Darth Vader helmet signed by every major cast member. I'm just looking at your stuff here. Um, so you got patches. You got yep. Thanos's gauntlet on there. Yep. For sale, one thousand two hundred fifty dollars. Was that used in the movie? No, that so that's a replica, but they're all metal and they're fully they fully articulate, fully so you can articulated. actually wear it and use it. Now, do you guys make those yourself? Is Levi- we commission them. Commission them, okay. Yeah. There's the dirty girl bat, Lucille, 150 bucks. Yep. There's a got, Warhardt version too. There's a what? A Warhardt version of that bat, which is essentially a uh, I can't remember now whether it's a letter of steel core, but. Basically, it's the mean-spirited version of the mean-spirited bat. Dirty Girl Bat War Hardened Edition. Have you ever wanted 
to lead a gang of outlaws during the apocalypse, but couldn't because you lacked the proper weapons. Well, <laughs> look no further with the Dirty Girl Bat, made with real barbed wire. It's a real home run, and so are you. Limited edition prop replica. The War Hardened Edition is weighted to provide extra smashing power. Yep. Also, the bat is wrapped with additional red-tipped barbed wire that really pops. <laughs> it does do that. What, does it like make a sound? No, it just will pop through anything it touches. Ah, really... <laughs> I got you. I got you. I got you. I believe uh, Kentucky Ballistics, he, did, uh, he took one of those and smashed all sorts of stuff with it. Oh, wow. So I was at this demonstration the other day at Royal Range. They were demonstrating this product that you put over glass. Yep. Like windows and windshields. Yeah. And that film. Right. And um, it stops bullets. Yep. But they were taking bats to it, too. So I got they had their bat up there, and they had like an aluminum something. I don't know what it was. Sure. And they're like, hey, come up here and give this, you know, some, a couple of swings lefty. I was like, okay. So I went up there and I started, I hit like three times and I, the bat started bending. <laughs> <laughs> I bent their bat. They're like, that's never happened before. I was like, it's time for a new bat. So they need to get one of these Lucille's. That would be bat. awesome. Bat. Hearing that you hit the a metal bat so hard it bent makes my hands hurt. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, I hit it pretty good. <laughs> I didn't say. I was like, but can it pass the lefty test? <laughs> oh man! But that's cool. So if you guys want to buy some stuff, uh, so what? What about the guns? Is are they for sale to the public, or are you yep. just? Yep, those are all on Leviathan Defense. Leviathan, I'm going to look that up. And just like everybody in the gun industry right now, we're out of stock of almost everything. Leviathan Defense, right here. Yeah, dude, kind I want, of, I want one. I love the octopus. Yep, yep, it's good. it's an awesome logo. Um, but yeah, decent all billet uh, upper and lower, good mid range AR. Valhalla, Ragnarok, Loki. Yep. yep. Helmuth, three hundred eight AR ten pistol. Dude, that Hellmouth is that's a fireball spitting son of a bitch. That thing is mean. <laughs> is it? I bet it is. So the the Hellmouth, Leviathan Defense Hellmouth 308 pistol is a badass fire breather. Lightweight, quick maneuvering, and heavy hitting. This pistol will give Thor a run for his money. The yep. Hellmouth uses a Leviathan matched receiver set, a lightweight M lock handguard, DRG components that are 100% American made and finished off with Magpul furniture. If you're looking for a new pistol that can bring the thunder, <laughs> Pick up the Leviathan Defense Hellmouth. <laughs> Who comes up with your uh, your descriptions? Uh, that's a mix. It's it's a team effort, but we've got some some pretty entertaining people here. So, all right. So the next VP spot that comes available, put my name in the hat. You got it. <laughs> VP of podcasts. There you go. The VP of talking. <laughs> talking lead. So um, you can't talk about some of the new stuff um, that you got coming up. But give us give us a hint, maybe video games, movies. If we we got one, we know one that's coming up. You talked talked a little bit about it. Um, talk about some some other ones that you can give us a hint towards that may be coming up. So some stuff that's coming out that we had a significant amount to do with um, the next Jurassic World, uh, the next Batman. Oh, sweet. Yep. Like the uh, one with that, the guy from uh, the Twilight series, Batman? Yeah, the newest one. Okay. One, yeah. Yep. Um, Patrick something, I can't remember. I think, what else is fun? Just trying to think of what's finished filming. So it's it's been weird, because normally this stuff takes, you know, six to eight months, right? Yeah. But with COVID in the middle, it slowed everything down. So all these projects that were started oh, I know. months ago now are just finally getting completed. And at this point, I've kind of forgotten like <laughs> what's in what stage because it's gotten yeah. pushed so many times. But are you guys seeing that it's starting to pick up again now? Absolutely. Yeah, Movie that's a good sign. Basically back to full speed, uh, particularly anything filming in Europe. Mm. Are they not as strict over there? 
Uh, it's just being handled differently. Yeah. Like California is still essentially closed. Yeah, Europe, they just uh, essentially made like exclusion zones where it's open to movies and they just have to stay in and there's really rigid testing and stuff like that. Yeah, cool. Well, that's yeah. good. I mean, that's a good sign. That, you know, if Hollywood's opening back up, then uh, should be, you know, everything else should be following suit. And that's the hope. But that's cool. So, guys, check out Leviathan Defense. Uh, they've got some cool rifles there, some pistols. Uh, but again, like Chris said, I guess they're they're out of most stuff. Have you got like an ETA or any? I know you can't give an ETA, but you are you out of receivers and everything? We should have, at the very least, we should have some matched receiver sets in the very near future, like the next week or so. Um, Can I'm I not, get one of those? Probably. Okay. Um, I'm I want to do hundred- some builds. Yeah. I've got a uh, I've got a seven six two barrel that I want to build an AR around. Yep. So if you yep. guys got the parts for that, you want to send them to me, I'll do give you guys credit for it. There you go. Hell yeah. Yeah, but, I'll find out. I know we might even have the uh, receiver sets here already. Nice. I think that they're not on the site yet. And then for like the memorabilia patches, apparel and stuff like that, it's leviathanprime.com. Yep. Uh, which I would guess you guys probably add stuff to that all the oh, time. Oh, that's constantly changing. Is that where they would go find maybe if they wanted the, if you guys were selling the vest or something like that, like yep. gear? Yep. and Exactly. Well, but the defense, if, they were, if you're doing optics or something like that, would that go on the defense side or would that still be over on the... Yeah, that'd probably be defense side. Gotcha. That's cool. So you could own, you know, possibly a movie prop, something that was in a a cool movie. Absolutely. So we did that with um, um, the watch company, S&B Watches. Yep. They had done a a series of watches for a a Bruce Willis movie. Oh, nice. That he released. Or not Die Hard. Uh, what was the one that came out where he had that super sweet piece of furniture from New Jersey Concealment? I don't know. the name. I think the name of the movie was In Time. Oh, okay. It's not the one I was thinking of. Something like It wasn't a very good movie. I'll just go ahead and say it. it <laughs> sure. It was, <laughs> what it is. <laughs> if, if you, Bruce Willis has done a lot of B movies lately. Yes. He's like, he's like the Steven Seagal now of... Of movies, it seems like once they once these action heroes get in a certain point in their career, it's like they're just putting out a movie every week, <laughs> right? Checking boxes, getting a paycheck, getting ready to retire. Exactly, you know. And I think I think that maybe that's the formula. I don't know, but you know, he's been in a lot of these just really not diehard quality movies, yep. <laughs> kind yep. of, kind of stuff. But this was one. It was a decent movie. It had Michael Chiklis in it also. Um, but we gave it away at Shot Show. It was one that was actually used in the in the movie. So, oh, nice! So it was kind of cool. So maybe we'll get with you guys and maybe come up with a prop and do a giveaway for our, for our listeners in the future. For sure, that'd be kind of cool. Well, very cool. So, Chris, I really enjoyed catching up with you. Absolutely, man. Always. I could Always. I could go another two hours with you on this talking. You know, talking stuff. Uh, I got all kinds of questions and nerdy stuff that I, I can nerd out on you big time. Yep. Uh, we'll save that for another episode. There you go. Next next round. Next round. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Well, all right, guys. Go go show Chris some love. Uh, do you have a personal... You've got a personal Instagram Facebook, right? Yeah. Do, do you want people uh, to go there? Sure. If, if you uh, want to follow my Instagram and come to the realization that I only post once every like six months or so, it's... Uh, <laughs> Just a dude named Chris. Uh, if you want to follow my uh, little side hustle for uh, oh, we didn't talk about that. So yeah, Chris is Chris <laughs> has actually got a product that he's making of of his own. It's pretty badass. So let's talk about that real quick. Yep. So I, I partnered with uh, Ryan Hoover and Amber Stuklinski. Uh They're part of Fit to Fight in North Carolina, doing you know real gritty, like real world combative self defense stuff. You know, started as Krav Maga years ago and really uh, evolved from there to something that's a little more um, realistic, I guess we'll call it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Ryan uh, actually came up with this knife design, which is it's really designed to just be like 
the perfect backup easy to conceal fighting knife. So, you know, it's not a camp tool. You're not going to split wood with it. Like you're not going to open boxes all day. Like you're going to cut flesh. For, yeah. This is meant for putting holes in bad guys if they're trying to kill you. Um, and, so it's yeah, kind of got a, like a karambit design, got a yeah, so circle, it's got the, the, the finger hole. Loose, you can't lose it, but it's a straight blade with a, uh, uh, Tonto, uh, point. Just uh, no serration, straight edge, uh, and it's really, really flat and thin. I don't know if you can see it, Lefty, but it's, I, yeah, mean, it's I mean, it's real thin. And that's just so that when it's concealed with the sheath, which is designed to be IWB, um, mm-hmm. it's, it sits really flat against your body and it's hard to see. Yeah. What would you say that weighs? Oof. At most, like, six and a half ounces maybe what i like about it is it's got that deep uh pinky um yep that right there yeah the the pinky cut so yeah. that your finger's not sliding off of the handle into the blade when you're doing the holes where you need them exactly and uh yeah so it's got nice the, hand stop <laughs> exactly the finger loop the finger stop it's got a uh, bit of a point on the back of the grip so that you can use it as a uh, like pain compliance uh, tool. Mm-hmm. And it actually comes with an aluminum trainer, too, so you can practice that draw. If you have a training partner, you can practice you know, in context with somebody. Yeah. Uh, but name of the company is Hard Ready, because life is hard. Be ready. Hard Ready. <laughs> yeah. uh, hard Ready Brand on Instagram, hardreadybrand.com. Uh, these are currently selling. They are seventy nine ninety nine plus shipping. Okay, and that comes with the sheath. Yes, sir, with the sheath and trainer for seventy nine ninety nine. That's not bad at all. Very cool. Yep. Yeah. So check check that out. Um, Chris's side hustle, as he calls it. Yeah. <laughs> I know we got a lot of listeners that are into the the Krav Maga and the the knife fighting and yep and whatnot. So that'll be cool. Firm believer, you're you're way more likely to end up in a fist fight than a gun fight, so you might as well be prepared for that too. Well, more people are killed in fist fights than with a gun, Absolutely. than with a rifle, by a whole lot. You know, and so. they're not banning feet or gun or fist or <laughs> fighting. Not yet. Not yet. Yeah. You know. But leadheads, make sure you go and show Chris some love. Leviathan Group and Hard. What is it? Hard. Hard Ready Brand. Hard Ready Brand. Uh, let him yep. know your lead head. Maybe he might throw in an extra sticker or something like that. There you go. Uh, but as always, make sure you go and support those that make this show possible. Our good buddies over at Mission First Tactical. David has set up a lead head uh, discount code, and it is lead head. If you use the code lead head at Mission First Tactical, you get 20% off your order. And that's on their magazines. That's on their holsters. That's on their AR-15 accessories, uh, their dump trays, their tactical wallets, which Mission First Tactical is the exclusive producer of the Talking Lead dump trays. Nice. Really nice. Very nice. It's got our logo on there. Um, and then our tactical wallets also have the Talking Lead logo. You can get those at Mission First Tactical. Uh, but what's really cool is you're like, fuck, I don't like your logo lefty i want to have the american flag or i want to have some other logo on there they can do that they can custom make uh a dump tray a wallet i think in, even on some of their holsters they can uh put those logos on there. they got this ink injection system that goes into their moldings and it actually is injected into it so it's not like on top where it'll scratch off or anything like that uh, so very scratch resistant and it'll last you a really long time Mission First Tactical, uh, SEAL-1, talked about them earlier. I've uh, been using SEAL-1 now exclusively uh, for several months uh, on all my firearms and some other products, like I said, my knife, my car, uh, and some of my pool equipment, too. I've been putting it on there. It's really uh, protecting some of my pool equipment. Uh, very corrosive resistance So those AK-47s. If some of you are shooting that corrosive ammo, uh, it'll protect your barrels. So go check them out, seal1.net, and use the code. What do you think it is, Chris? I'm going to go out on a limb and say it's talking lead. Leadhead. Leadhead, damn. 
Lead head. <laughs> he teed it up for me and I dropped it. You dropped there, the ball, man. Come on. Twenty-five percent off at Seal One on any of the products that they have there. Uh, and then our newest sponsors, Nemo Arms. They're making very high end rifles, shotguns, pistols, very nice. And of course, like Chris said, everybody's kind of hurting on on products and whatnot. So expect a back order, but it's going to be well worth the wait. Uh, you can use code TL10 and you're going to get 10% off anything at Nemo Arms. And that includes firearms, which is unheard of. Man, they got that uh, 300 Win Mag AR. That thing is sick. They actually invented that. They were the first to come out with the 300 Win Mag AR. Uh, Nemo Arms, TL10, get 10% off. Nobody's giving discounts on their firearms. Most people are going up on the prices they're offering you 10% discount. Yep. So go go check them out. And I should have a shotgun review coming up soon from them, Leadheads. So stay nice. tuned for that. Uh, and then ASP USA, our good buddy Michael Hess over there, any of their flashlight, and ASP is ASP. So most of you know them as ASP, especially in the law enforcement community. Uh, they've got the batons, the cuffs, uh, you know, make a lot of equipment for our law enforcement men and women. But any of their flashlight or flashlight accessories, you're going to get 20% discount if you use the code LED20. You're nice. going to get 20% off there. And he just sent me a new flashlight, uh, their new flashlight, and they're, they have pepper spray there too, which I didn't know that they, they had pepper spray. Uh, but they've got a, a different, a little different delivery system than Mission First Tactical has on their de- their um their pepper sprays. Uh, so he sent me a couple of those too. I'm going to be testing and trying out. Uh, and then I've got one of their um, mini batons mm-hmm. um, that I'm going to be trying out too. It's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, ASP, ASP USA, 20% off, lead 20. And then Chris, you know, I do this new series called the AK Corner. Yep. It's actually not new, but this is our third year that we've been doing it, so it's kind of new. Once a month segment that we do, and we've got a badass logo that was created for us last year for the AK Corner, and we've got those on T-shirts, hoodies, women's shirts, uh, and mugs, tumblers now. You can get those. And that's at Factory47, F-A-K-T-O-R-Y 47.com. And we've got our badass Talking Lead AK Corner logoed apparel there. Leadhead is the discount code. (laughs) (laughs) It makes sense. I've tried to keep it the same. You know, if somebody will talk to me before they set up the codes, I'm going to say make it Leadhead because it's just Mm. easy for our listeners. It's easy for me. Uh, And Leadhead's going to get you 10% off at factory47.com. Let's go check that out. And then Armor Concepts, we had them on a few episodes back. Talked about home fortification, Chris, the importance of home fortification. Uh, They've got these um, door armor, basically reinforcements that you put around uh, your door frame and pretty much makes it virtually impossible for someone to kick that in. Nice. So as as many deterrents as you can can give a would-be intruder into your home the better and armor concepts use the code talking lead 25 you get 25 percent off there and if any of these codes don't work let me know shoot me an email talking at gmail.com and uh i'll get them to reactivate it or maybe you put in the wrong code we'll make sure you're putting in the right code uh, but uh, that's how we get these codes is that you guys go and use them. You go and show them love. You let them know that uh, you've heard them here on the show and we'll get more companies, we'll get more codes and save you guys uh, as much money as we can. And at the same time, a lot of these companies also give prizes for us to give away. So lots of cool giveaway prizes like Geisley. They hooked us up with some triggers. We gave away an AK trigger on the last AK corner. We've got some AR triggers that we're going to be giving away on upcoming episodes. So stay tuned for that. Uh, And all kinds of other cool stuff. 
And of course, our good buddies at Caltech, go show them some love. I don't know how much you appreciate them. Uh, and hopefully, more, we're going to be doing more with Leviathan. So tell yeah, Leviathan that uh, you really appreciate them being on the show. And we'll get Chris back on. And We've already got got one of his clients that's going to be coming up. We just, just mentioned that. So stay tuned for that. But until then, as always, Leadheads, keep your loved ones close. And that hard ready HR1 backup fighting knife closer. And your firearms closer. <laughs> 